Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a look at a story which I didn't see coming. But there's a strong argument that I probably should have. You see, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen, is we are getting another version of the Family Pokemon card game set. And it is going to feature Cinderace V, Pikachu V, and Tyranitar V. And I have a whole bunch of questions for this. So let's get rolling, let's make some predictions, let's see what we know, and let's ask a bunch of questions and just leave them hanging if we don't. Now, just as a little bit of background here, I said a new version. We have, of course, seen this product before. It came out in Japan a little while ago, and it featured, well, it featured six Pokemon GXs. They were Mewtwo, Gyarados, Charizard, Pinsir, Raichu, and Wigglytuff. And I always felt really sad for Pinsir and Wigglytuff, because all the others got GXs in other ways. There were other cards. So, yeah, fine, the Mewtwo GX from this set was pretty much objectively trash. But it's all right, because we got the other Mewtwo GX that was actually pretty good and saw a bit of play here and there and helped to save it. And then got another GX in Detective Pikachu, which wasn't terrible, but let's just say wasn't particularly great. Point is, Mewtwo had enough GXs. Chill out, Mewtwo. Whereas Pinsir and Wigglytuff, these were the only GXs they had. And they were kind of deliberately bad GXs, because... These were intended as play with your family, learn to play. So if we look at the GXs, Mewtwo was a weird one because Mewtwo actually discarded all energy from your opponent's active, whereas the vast majority here, you know, it, it was designed to be just a straightforward learning experience. So Pinsir GX is just a vanilla card with two vanilla attacks. Interestingly enough, if anyone's interested, the other one here was Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff did have an attack which let you flip a coin and do more damage for heads. And a GX that let you heal all damage from this Pokemon. Wigglytuff GX, although not a good card, was as, um... Well, as complicated as things got, shall we say. And that was the entire point of the set, right? It was designed to teach you how to play. That was the goal. Simple cards, simple decks, go. Now, we did get this released over here, but with, shall we say, a giant asterisk. It was released over here as the Battle Academy, but there were three decks. All six of the GXs actually ended up being released in Hidden Fates, and we got one set that essentially had three of these decks in. But over here, they were three proper decks made up with these to go and play. And it was basically Pokemon's way of making a board game. It was a way of going, look, if you want to play the Pokemon TCG, but you don't want to build decks, and you don't want to buy booster packs, and you don't want to muck about, buy this. And the goal of the set was very simple. You just bought this, there were three decks. None of the decks hit each other for weakness, which I think is a really important underrated part of the Battle Academy because it basically means that it didn't give anybody a, an unfair advantage. It made the decks a little bit better against each other. And it was pretty much, I think, it's safe to say a success. And the reason I call it a success is because it went and started winning awards. The Toy Association gave it its Game of the Year award. Everything that I've heard, although I've not seen specific figures, I've heard enough to suggest it sold very well. It was a very successful product. And I've heard that over in Japan, these decks did pretty gosh darned well as well. So you know what? The fact that they're making a new version of this... Sounds absolutely sensible. Now, I do find it extremely interesting that last time around over in Japan, there were six decks in total. Over here, there were three basically released as a board game. And now there are only three versions of the decks. And I'm calling it right now. There is going to be a follow-up to the Battle Academy 
featuring these three decks. Now, I am hoping, if we can all remain just a little bit sensible, that the London Toy Fair in January 2022, that is 10 months from now, will be happening. It was cancelled this year for fairly obvious reasons. It happened last year because it was pre-pandemic, and I was going to go. And I went, ah, you know what? I've got a bunch of events going on this year and money's a bit tight. I'll skip it. Man, I regret not going to the London Toy Fair. It would have been the only event I could safely have gone to last year. Of course, I went to none. None of them were safe. This was my one chance and I blew it and I feel a little bit bad about myself. But my point is, I feel very strongly that if it's not released before then, that we are going to end up seeing the Battle Academy 2 at the London Toy Fair. It may even have been shown off this year had it happened, but we have absolutely no idea because it never did happen. Now, over in Japan, they're getting two versions of this, and I find this very strange indeed. One version comes with the Cinderace and Pikachu decks... And the other version comes with Cinderace, Pikachu, and Tyranitar. And yet, for some reason, it costs roughly double, even though there's only one extra deck. There must be something here we're not seeing. There's no way they're adding a Tyranitar deck and all of a sudden it's double. And the answer is, yeah, you get a bit more stuff. So the double pack with Cinderace and Pikachu, you get your two decks. A sheet of damage counters, burn, and poison markers. There'll be little cardboard ones you pop out from a sheet. Two half play mats, a coin, and a deck box. Two deck boxes, in fact. And then the bigger version, you get the three decks, plus the coin, plus a bigger sheet, a storage deck, three rubber bands, one big play mat, two battle guide books, a beginner's guide, a battle table sheet, a damage counter case, and a storage box. So not just the extra deck, but a bunch of other stuff as well. Now, here's the thing. At this point in the video, I would usually turn around and go, right, well, what are we looking at in terms of Pokemon V here? Are they going to be reprints? Well, let's start off with Tyranitar. There is absolutely no way whatsoever they reprint this Tyranitar in this product. And the reason essentially is, and I mention this every so often, I taught business professionally for 15 years. Kind of hoping I'm done with it, if I'm honest with you. Not that I don't love teaching, it's just I kind of love doing this more. And the thing is, look at what these products are. These products are designed specifically to help families play together and the there are basically only two functions these products need to have. They need to work in terms of having functioning decks out of the box and they need to keep things simple and fun. Simple and fun. That is the goal. Simple and fun. Well, if I'm a brand new Pokemon player... I pull this Tyranitar V out of this product and I go, why does it have that single strike or in Japan Ichigeki symbol in the top right hand corner? What does Ichigeki mean? What? One of my other cards not have Ichigeki symbols. It's confusing. There is absolutely no way whatsoever this gets printed in this set. Now, funnily enough, we have actually seen a single strike Cinderace as well. But there is no way whatsoever this gets printed in there for the exact same reason. It is never going to happen. It is just so far outside the realms of possibility. There is no way whatsoever they are actually going to do this. I refuse to believe it for even a second. Now, there is actually a different Cinderace. This is the one that came around both in Rebel Clash... And as a promo, exact same card, but different artwork on the promo. And in theory, this one could be reprinted. But it's got an ability whereby if a stadium is in play, this Pokemon has no retreat cost. And let's go back to those cards I showed you earlier. The Pinsir, the Mewtwo. They are designed to be simple. I mean, if you look at the Charizard, and it was funny because the Charizard from the old family set actually ended up being a really good card in Mewtwo and Mew decks because you could pop it in the discard pile. You could copy it from the discard pile and then for four energy do 300 damage. It ended up being a really good card that saw a bunch of play. But that Charizard, it's, hey, there's a big Charizard breathing fire and he does lots of damage. That was it. That was the entire point of the card. So this Cinderace, it's too complicated to end up being reprinted here.
Now, again, we have seen a Pikachu V as well. Now, the Pikachu V, we've seen it before it came around in Vivid Voltage. And as a promo. Yeah, that's right. We've actually seen two different Pikachu V. The one that came around as a promo does 30 damage for each of your bench Pokemon, which seems a little complicated. And then the one from Vivid Voltage has an attack that charges up energy, inserts energy and attaches them. And it, it seems a bit too complicated. So although we've seen these cards before, and in theory we could have them, I feel very, very confident that these will be new Pokemon V that we've not seen before that are purely here in order to help people learn the game. And for that reason, I think it is extremely likely that they're going to be new. And I'm sorry to say, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to be a bit boring. When the Family GXs were revealed before, I whacked all six of them into a single video. And if you've been watching this channel, you know that I'm fine with lumping cards together. But there is a limit usually when it comes to six GXs. That's how uninspiring they were. My point very simply is, I feel it's very likely we're getting new cards, new Pokemon Vs, and they are going to suck. Having said that, look at the Charizard. That ended up being a really nice card, ladies and gentlemen. So you never know. It could end up being quite a bit better than it initially appears. Either way, this set is coming out. It is very likely to be a Battle Academy 2. And I would like to hear from you guys as to what you think of these products. Are you going to pick it up? Are you excited? All that kind of stuff. Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio or you can do exactly that but by far the most important thing as always look after yourselves till next time would ya thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio